can uh, talk about the value in the race and of course uh, get any more of those flat doubles that are coming in for the Lincoln and the Summer Mile. If you like one in the Summer Mile and you like one in the Lincoln uh, or even if you don't but you fancy just a free entry into our £30 uh, prize competition, pick one if you double them up. Uh, you could be in the chance of winning that. Over to Luke for those uh, competition entries and, of course, the latest odds on the Shima Classic. Please, Luke. Yeah, this is one of the races of the day for me. Um, maybe not one to get too involved with in the betting, but Magician is the 11-4 to favourite, of course. Was victorious at the Breeders' Cup under a brilliant Ryan Moore ride. Gentle Donna is 6-1. to one. Denim and Ruby, 15-2. to two. Sirius de Zegler's is 8-1. to one. That could be, uh, be a bit big. Dominant one at Chartin is 14-1. to one. Then he gets excellent result of 14s. Mount Athos at 20 to 1. And Duna Den, who always seems to run his race, is 25 to 1. But maybe the distance might be a bit short for him now in his older age. But uh, we'll go for a bit of expert tipping from the panel now. <laughs> expert ticket uh, tipping, of course it is. Um, what do you make of those odds then? Uh, you know, Magician, 11 to 4. Um, are you a fan of that deck? Uh, do you I, think it's worth still? 11 to 4, is it worth it? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. He'd be he'd be value now at that price, but I do I do think he's he's the best horse in the race, or potentially the best horse in the race. He I obviously put him up today as one of my selections, but um, you know I was very very impressed with him in the, when he won the Irish Guineas last year on, on proper ground. The thing is with this horse, he can't have the ground quick enough. He he literally wants it like the road. So um, you know, good ground out in Dubai from today shouldn't be shouldn't be no excuses for him. Yeah, he's just a, he's just a really classy horse to win. At the, the the Breeders' Cup, like he did, I was hugely impressed. You know, he he came from a long way back that day. He might have picked up the pieces late, but the form of that race and beating the Fugue on the track she's gone well at before is rock solid. And that was all as a three-year-old. Better better suited uh, for the one mile four as opposed um, to like the, the St James's Palace mile, where obviously he was dead last, disappointing well, on that day, of course. But the the one mile four is that is that positive? Um, I, I, my own personal opinion is he will be a better horse over ten. A proper good gallop um, on proper fast ground over 10 furlongs but Cirrus de Aigla won this race two years ago who was another proper 10 furlong horse I, I think he tends to struggle over this trip he's not quite as good so you can if you have a horse who's good enough you know he can get get through it but the other thing that will help him with the trip there doesn't seem to be a lot of pace in the race today he's got a nice draw I'm hoping Joseph will just leave his natural early pace get him into a good position start, sit in the first three or four just don't over complicate it yeah well if the feud goes in as well uh, stall number four um, could be the stall of the day in terms of uh, the racing in Maidan today is it still four magician for you as well or, or are there others in the car in fact I'm just going to say Declan I'm quite surprised that you didn't pick out uh, Gentle gentle Donna or, or Denim and Ruby the, the Japanese yeah. As, as though, those you love. We'll touch on that in just a second. Those two Japanese ones uh, for the expert Japanese view. <laughs> but um, Adam, uh, if you can, what, what are you looking at here? Yeah, obviously a lot depends on magician. Obviously, it's the progressive class horse in the race who could win this quite comfortably. But like, if you're looking for value, um, with this bit wide of a mark, I backed Mars last year for the Derby over a mile and a half, and it just didn't come down the. The hill that well at Epsom. It's um, better than me, I'll back Dawn approach. So. Exactly, but. <laughs> well, he came down it, but he came down it too quick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but the thing with Mars is they sort of dropped him back in trip, and he always looked to me as a stayer, and he's had a couple of spins in Dubai, he hasn't done that great. But now he's stepping up from a mile nine furlongs to a mile and a half. So I think on decent ground, 33 to 1, I think I might just have a little bit of a nibble. I, okay. have, to, I have to agree with you, you know, totally on that. I loved Mars the way he ran in the Derby last year. I thought he was the unlucky horse in the mm. race. And I think, yeah, I agree. Things haven't just played out to yeah. us. Still unexposed. You know, still very unexposed. Seven starts, you know. eight starts. Yeah, so. he's, now with Mike de Kock, you know, I think he could be a big outside player, you know, at, at his price. I, I, again, I agree with Declan, a magician. I thought mm. he was so impressive in America and when he won the Irish Guineas. When he went to the St. James's Palace, for people who don't know, he, he, he spent time in... Um, in a hydrotherapy spa unit, and he jumped out of it. Right. Now you stand in this, right, and the and the, the salt water comes up to where, however high you need it, yeah, so it might yeah, be knee yeah. high or up, up to the shoulders. Knee, yeah. And um, he actually jumped out of it. Now to jump out of something like that is like from a standstill over a, a so five-foot thing. So you're thing. saying maybe enter him into the Grand National? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, <laughs> I'm saying I'm saying he, he got injured when he did that. Okay. And, and it was a struggle to get him to Ascot. So that's you know draw a line through that. But Understandable. I think, but I, I we're going to have to just wrap it up because we have got the World Cup to talk about, of course. Yeah. Um, would you have one of the Japanese selections just quickly? I'm a, I'm a big fan of Gentle Don. I, I just I think 
the draw could maybe just be a little bit of a factor at the okay. price. So, but so magician. Magician for me, but one I will put up at a big price is Frankie de Torre's Dub Day. Dub Day. Yeah. Okay. He and, is and a big price at 40 to 1. And yourself, Adam? Just a little bit each round Mars. Okay. And, and you I've got the same, a little bit each round Mars. Same as well. Let's quickly get um, Luke Elder's opinion on this one and, and whether there are any shifts in the market since we last spoke to him. Luke, uh, how, how do you see this one panning out? Yeah, uh, Magician is just a strongly back to 11 to 4 favourite. If he turns up, then could well take a lot of beating. One that I quite liked at a price is Man Athos. Ran much better than I expected last time, went third here at Maidan. Um, I completely agree with Declan on Dub Day, though. Dub Day is way overpriced in this with Frankie de Tori. Uh, but we'll be moving on to the World Cup in a second, so we'll get some prices for that. And the one that everyone wants to be with is Military Attack. It was about 9 to 1 a couple of days ago. He's now 5 to 1, 4 to 1 showing in places. Ruler of the world, no one wants him. 13 to 2, short of 7 to 2 a couple of days ago. Akid Feed is in at 12s, Prince Bishop 12 to 1, African Story 12 to 1, Hillstar 14s, uh, then you've got Sanchez at 14s and Mukadram at 16s, and the rest are 16 to 1 bar. Yeah, Mukadram, that's a shame actually. I, I thought that was had, had a huge chance, but again, uh, been drawn in the car park, so, so possibly avoid that today.